and welcome to my kitchen. My name is Hope Malone. I'm the Big Cheese at Ham and Cheese Events. You've asked me how to make a pot roast ahead of time. So I'm going to tell you today how to make a pot roast ready for the crock pot. We're going to prep all the ingredients the night before. We're going to make our marinade and let our pot roast sit in the marinade overnight. Then in the morning, before you leave for work, just plop everything in your crock pot and you can leave. When you come home, it'll be ready for a great dinner. So to start the recipe, we need to, we need carrots, probably about two cups. Potatoes, Idaho potatoes are fine. If you'd like to use a roasted potato, that as well, a little red roast is fine. I like a sweet yellow onion, mushrooms, rosemary, fresh from my garden, but if you don't have fresh rosemary, then you can use a dried rosemary. Garlic, chopped garlic, about two tablespoons. Kosher salt. And for the marinade, we're gonna use the salt as well. Some crushed red pepper for a little zing. Herbs de Provence for an Italian seasoning. Olive oil, a red wine, pepper, and some Worcestershire sauce. So first, let's make the marinade. You're gonna combine your red wine, about three quarters of a cup, the Worcestershire sauce, two tablespoons of garlic, crushed red pepper, the herbs, salt and pepper, and olive oil. And I've already made this, and you're gonna put all those ingredients in a large Ziploc bag. Once you get that, you wanna place your pot roast, or your chuck roast, into the bag, seal it, and let it sit overnight. So we have that, I'm gonna set this aside and we're actually gonna make the prep for the vegetables. The first thing that I like to do is the carrots. I'm gonna take this and we're actually gonna put all the vegetables straight into the crock pot. So not only do we have a quick, easy meal, but we have quick, easy cleanup. Carrots, carrots are funny because you can buy the little baby carrots, but truly the baby carrots are just these large carrots that manufacturers whittle down to the perfect little size. So I like to do real carrots, if you will. Cut the tops off, and you're gonna cut the bottoms off as well. If you don't like the skin, you can peel them, but actually there's quite a bit of nutrition inside the skin. So I really like to leave those on. So once you cut your tops and your bottoms off, you just wanna cut them in about an inch and a half section. Very simple. It's called a rough chop. If you're not a carrot fan, you don't have to put it in. Actually, if you're not a fan of any of these individual items, you can make this to taste and make your family happy with what they like. So once we've got a nice rough chop, then we can move on to the potatoes. The potatoes as well, a nice, uniformed cube so that everything cooks at the same temperature. When you have large pieces and small pieces, then you may find that something's gonna be a little soggier than the rest. So we've started the carrots with a one inch cube, an inch, inch and a half, so we're gonna continue that. I've tried to get the same size potatoes so that my chopping is even. We'll take your potatoes, just chop them in cubes. Nice, simple, and again, you can do this the night before. You can eyeball this. Typically, it's one or two potatoes that you need. If you'd like more potatoes, add more potatoes. Just depends on how big your crock pot is, and I have a very big crock pot. Then we're gonna rough chop as well the onions. One inch cubes. An onion, make sure you take the top and the bottom off. And being that onions are not super expensive, when you cut it in half, you're gonna have a half of an onion and you wanna remove this dried skin. Sometimes it's very easy and the onion peels away. At other times, you have a little difficulty. Take as much off because you don't wanna get that dried piece of onion inside your vegetables. And I just quarter these. 
very simple, very quick. After we do this, we're going to cut our mushrooms, but our mushrooms are not going to go in until the very end, as well as the green beans. These two items actually you can hold and not put in your crock pot right now. When you get home after your work, then you want to put these in because these will cook very fast and you don't want them to be mush. So we're going to reserve these for when you get home from work. But again, you're just going to do a rough chop. Green beans are one of my family's favorites, so I always make sure that there's green beans and it almost makes it like a big stew. Then we can move on to the rosemary. I got this from the garden, but like I said, if you've got dry, that's fine. Simply run your hand and remove only the leaves of the rosemary. And then you want to do a finer chop, not necessarily a rough chop. Being very careful not to cut your fingers, you want to tuck them under and move your knife. If you quarter turn, you're going to make sure that you get all of your rosemary in a fine chop. An easy way to get your herbs up so that you don't scoop is actually put them on your knife, being very careful so that you don't cut yourself, and simply lay those in. Now it's time for the garlic, and I've pre-measured two tablespoons of garlic. You can go more, you can go less, up to you, but I like a lot of garlic. And then I like to add some tarragon. Tarragon's a nice, earthy winter flavor, and a lot, a little bit goes a long way. It's more of a delicate herb, so gently pull your leaves. It's not like a rosemary, which has the hard stalk. And again, just a small chop. With tarragon, only a quarter of a teaspoon is really all you need to infuse your entire pot roast. So at this point, we have all of our vegetables in and it's still dry. This is where I like to add a little bit of red wine. I'm going to roughly pour about two-thirds of a cup and I'm going to let this marinate overnight as well as the beef. This is going to really bring all your vegetables alive and when you add the marinade in the morning to your vegetables, we're going to have a great blend and aromatics. So we're going to put this in the refrigerator along with the meat that we've done. And then in the morning, we're going to take everything out. It'll all still be refrigerated. And we're going to place our pot roast along with the marinade that you have into your crock pot. Simply lay it on top of your vegetables. It's going to be perfect. Put your top on and it's time to go to the crock pot. I'm going to tell you that at low, if you go to work for at least eight hours, put your crock pot on low and leave. And when you come back home, maybe eight hours away, then you're going to add your chopped mushrooms and your green beans if you choose and give it about another 30 minutes. After that, You've got a perfect pot roast and a perfect dinner. My name is Hope Malone. I'm the Big Cheese at Ham and Cheese Events, and today I've shown you how to make a pot roast in the crock pot.